So I've got a learning module here. We're going to cover two-way ANOVA, but at the same time, you're going to be working through a workshop on two-way ANOVA. So you need to make sure that you've got this workshop open for today's class, as well as the uh, starter file. It's called Ultra Membrane Starter. And so as you go through this learning module, you're going to complete the workshop. And so the two of them kind of go hand in hand. So let's talk about two-way ANOVA. In two-way ANOVA, we're looking for significance of two different treatments. Here we have an example of a development of an ultrafiltration membrane for separating proteins and peptide drugs from a fermentation broth. We have additive as one of our treatments. We're looking at two different percentages, 2% and 5%. And we also have a second treatment, that's time, whether or not we allow this separation to go one hour or three hours. For each of the combinations of additive, weight percent, and time, we've taken four different replicates. These are just four observations or experimental results. The entries, by the way, are separation values in percent. Our goal of two-way ANOVA here is to determine if additive or time have a significant effect on the output, which is separation percent. Also, when you have two different factors, additive and time are known as factors, you can have an interaction effect. And so we're going to determine if the interaction between additive and time is significant. If we were to plot these data, this is what we would see. Again, our output is separation. On the x-axis here, I have time of separation. And we're looking at the percent of separation as a function of two different levels of additive percent. We have two weight percent here in blue and five weight percent in red. So I want you to answer these questions. Does it appear that additive has an effect on the output? Does it appear that time has an effect on the output? So I think most of you probably said that additive does have an effect on separation. As we go from 2% to 5%, you see that we have a, a pretty dramatic increase in separation. Time, on the other hand, it sort of depends because at the lower percentage of additive, at 2 weight percent, time definitely does have a pretty significant effect. We go from about 70% separation to about 82. Whereas at 5 weight percent additive, it doesn't really look like time has much of an effect because we're just increasing slightly about 91 to maybe 92 or 93%. And that might not even be a significant increase. So we're going to go about proving this statistically. And that's what we can do using two-way ANOVA. Let's talk about some terminology for two-way ANOVA. We have A, the number of levels of the first factor. We're saying the first factor here is additive weight percent. B is the number of levels of the second factor. We're saying that's time. And little n is the number of trials at each combination of factors. On the workshop document, go ahead and answer those three questions for what A, B, and N are. So A should be two. We have two weight percents of additive. We have two different levels for time, so B is 2, and we have 4, N equals 4, trials at each combination of factors. Big N, therefore, is just A times B times N, or 16 total observations. So if we looked at this graphically, in a three-dimensional view, it would look something like this. On the x-axis over here, we have additive. On the y-axis, we have time. And then on the z-axis, we have separation percent. So we can kind of visualize this as a three-dimensional plot. This, by the way, is for no interaction. I'll show you in a minute what it would look like for interaction. So if there's no interaction between additive and time, you would expect that the increase in separation when going from one hour to three hours should be the same regardless of additive percent. And so we can also put this uh, surface on here. This is going to be a flat sheet if there's no interaction. This is also known as a 3D response surface. And we'll be talking about response surfaces quite a bit for the remainder of the semester. Now, if we look at the case with interaction, which is what we have in our example, the red line back here is not as steep as the blue line. In fact, the red line in our example, as I showed earlier, is almost flat. This means we have interaction. The increase in percent separation at a lower additive versus time is much more dramatic than the percent separation increase at a higher percent additive. In this case, 
we have our response surface that's more of a curved sheet. So in other words, it might be like a piece of paper that's been sort of folded over. It's not a flat sheet as we saw before with no interaction. If you have interaction, you're going to have a curved response surface. Keep in mind that this analysis is analogous to putting together a regression equation where the interaction term is this x1, x2 term. So whenever you multiply your regressors, that accounts for interaction. And that's something that we can obtain using ANOVA. So in ANOVA, as you know, we can partition the sum of squares. Here we have the total sum of squares. Uh, here the index i is iterating through additive, or factor a. j is iterating through time, which is factor b. And k is the index of iteration through all samples for each of those different combinations of a and b. So this first term, yijk squared, is just the sum squared of all of our observations. And then we can subtract y dot 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 squared. y dot 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 squared is just the total sum of all our observations. And then we can divide by the product of a, b, and n. That's how we can compute the total sum of squares, the total variability in our data. We can then partition SST into a couple of different components. We have that due to factor a. SSA, and the equation for this is over here. We can also have SSB, which is the total variability due to factor B. We can assign some of the variability to the interaction effect between A and B. The equation is a little more tricky, but we subtract SSA and SSB. And finally, we can always compute the error by taking total minus SSA minus SSB and minus the interaction sum of squares. Then what we do is we set up an ANOVA table. This is similar to what we did with one-way ANOVA, or single factor ANOVA. We have our source, we have our sum of squares, we have our degrees of freedom. And I wouldn't worry about memorizing these because you can always get sort of the layout of an ANOVA table from text or a reference. And then we compute our mean squares. Our mean squares are just the sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. We calculate our test statistic based upon the F distribution, as you've done before, and then we can calculate P values. So let's go ahead and do this in Excel. I've got this template here. We need to calculate y.1 dot, y.2 dot, two dot, y1 dot dot, y2 dot dot, and y dot dot dot. We need to calculate all of those because we need to use those in these formulas over here for our sum of squares. I'll do the first one for you, and then you can do the others. And you're going to have to put these values on the workshop document. Y dot one dot means all values of i. Our index i is additive, so we're going to sum over all additives over the first index of b. That's what the one means. So we're just looking at these first two columns. And then the third position means over all k. And our index k is all of our replicates n. And so this is simply the sum of all of these. So that's what that refers to. You're going to do something similar for y dot 2 dot and y 1 dot dot and y 2 dot dot. And you can calculate the grand sum, which is y dot dot dot. When you're done computing those, put those values into the workshop and answer these two questions. All right, you should have got the following y dot 2 dot, about 699, y1 dot dot, 609, y2 dot dot, 734. And again, just to show you this, if, in case you didn't get it, this is just the sum over the second index for additive over all j, which is our levels of factor b, over all replicates. And then y dot 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 is just the grand sum of all of our values. Now we're ready to calculate SST, SSA, SSB, SSAB, and SSE using these equations over here. I would recommend naming these items as I indicate in the workshop. For example, this one is y dot one dot. This is y dot dot dot, just to help you when you're typing in these formulas. So why don't you go ahead and name those? as indicated in the workshop, and then calculate the sum of squares for each of them. SSAB is quite difficult, so I have just a formula that you can copy and paste to help you do this, but you have to make sure that you're first naming these cells as I indicate. I'll help you with one of these. I'll help you with SSA. 
Whenever we have summation, either single, double, or triple summation, you should think to use the sum squared. So A, we're going to sum squared all of our y i dot dots. So our y i dot dots are y1 dot dot. So that's y1 dot dot and y2 dot dot. So we're sum squaring those. And I'd forgotten to put my values for a, b, and n down here. We are dividing by b and dividing by n. And we're subtracting y dot 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 squared divided by a divided by b divided by little n. All right, so that should give you an idea how to calculate the others. Again, whenever you have, you have summation, single, double, or triple, you should be using the sum squared function in Excel. When you're done doing that, put the answers for your sum of squares into the workshop. So you should have got the following. And I'll click in these cells just so you can see the formulas. I already went over SSA, uh, SSB. If you need to pause, you can do so. SSAB, that's just that formula that I put in the workshop. And SS total. And the error you just find by subtracting SSA, SSB, and SSAB from SST. We're ready now to fill out this ANOVA table. We can put into our table the degrees of freedom now. The degrees of freedom you should get from number four on the workshop. There's just simple formulas. So why don't you go ahead and assign those and answer the question in the workshop. So you should get the following degrees of freedom. The total degrees of freedom is always the number of observations minus one. And then you can check that the sum of all the others equals the total. Now we can compute the mean squares uh, for A. This is just SSA divided by the degrees of freedom for A. And you can do the same for the remaining. Then you can compute the test statistic, F0, for each of those three, A, B, and A, B. The test statistic is just MS for that particular source divided by MS of the error. Finally, you can use the F.dist.rt formula to compute a p-value in column H. There's a couple of questions that you have to answer in the workshop for number four. So if you didn't get this, I can go through it real quick. The test statistic for A is just MSA divided by MSE. That for B is MSB divided by MSE. And that for AB is MSAB divided by MSE. We can then calculate p-values using f.dist.rt of our test statistic. For A, the degrees of freedom in the numerator is 1, and the degrees in the denominator are 12. And I'm going to put an absolute reference there so that I can just drag these down. And that's what we get for p-values for those particular sources. Based upon these p-values, what can we conclude after having done this two-way ANOVA? We're ready for the last step. This is step five. We're going to use the data analysis tool that's built into Excel. First, though, we need to group all of our replicates in, in columns. And so we just have to rearrange our data a little bit. I'll show you how to do this for the first bit of data. So when additive is two and time is one, I'm just going to uh, copy those first two, control C, I'm gonna paste them down there. And then we have to put the other two, control C, right below it. So we're, we're stacking them. Again, all the replicates for treatment combinations have to be in a single column. So why don't you do this for the others? So we've got all of our data stacked. And now you can go up here to the data tab, data analysis. And at the top, you see that there's this two-factor with replication, you can go ahead and click OK. The input range, you have to highlight all of these, including the headers, 2, 5, 1, 3, so all of that, rows per sample, 4, and all of your two-way ANOVA tables have to be prepared in this way, the exact same format. The output range, let's just put this into a new worksheet, and go ahead and click OK, and it churns through, and it creates this ANOVA output, and you can compare uh, this ANOVA table to what we just created. And you should see that it's exactly the same. Hope you enjoyed this activity.